based on questions, okay? So if you have any questions, there will be a great opportunity for that. And I know a lot of you have actually already filled out some great question cards, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. So this is what I wanted to talk about tonight. First off, just do a quick introduction. We'll talk about some rules for fairness so that everybody gets a really good experience tonight and what our goals are. Why did we actually hold this meeting? We're going to talk a little bit about how we got here. What are the things that led us to this point? VTC is going to make a short presentation to us as well. We're going to talk a little bit about what this LRT thing is. Not everybody actually knows. Some people have some information. Some people have just heard about it a little bit on the news. So we want to make sure everybody has some facts to work with. We're going to talk about what's being built and where in the city and what it might look like. Things like where is it going to be underground, where is it going to be above ground, like on the SRT, up on stilts. Where is it going to be at street level? All that stuff. We're going to talk about some really common concerns that come up in conversations, in meetings like this, in emails that I've seen go around, or postings on the internet, questions that people have about traffic transit in general. Hi, come on in. We're just getting started. And then we have a whole section for questions and answers at the end. Okay? So who is it that's actually here to present tonight? Okay? First off, from the TTC, and of course the TTC is Toronto's major transit agency, it's actually the largest transit agency in Canada, and they use 2,760 vehicles to transport 1.3 million riders every day, very, very busy. A lot of us use the TTC a lot, some of us use it a little bit, some of us don't use the TTC anymore, but we used to, and now we just get frustrated sometimes, okay? We all have different experiences, different relationships with the TTC. Hi there, come on in, there's still seats if you like. The organization that is hosting tonight, that I am a part of, and that my co-founder is a part of, uh, is called Code Red TO. And we actually formed the group because we were really worried that city council and provincial government and the premier might make a decision to spend a lot of extra money in one way that we didn't like. So we decided to try and make sure there was more information out there so that people could make up their own mind about the facts. Okay? Obviously, everyone gets their own opinion about this stuff. And where are the city councilors? Are they here? Uh, all the city councilors were invited, and we actually have a couple staff members from city councilors here tonight, and we're inviting them to our future well, events as well. The meeting is not very good. Yeah, no. Yeah. I absolutely, I, I wish that more people could be able to attend. Unfortunately, everyone's very busy, especially as spring starts, yeah. so we're just going to keep inviting them. They're busy, uh, not, uh, busy not to spend money. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. And I recommend give, give your city councilor a call and ask them why they, why they weren't able to so I just wanted to let you know that if you'd like to learn about our group, Code Red Teal, it's just coderedteal.com, or if you happen to have a Twitter account, you can just use at coderedteal on Twitter, okay? And that will actually be responded to if you have questions. The three founders are Joe Drew, sitting here beside me, Cameron McLeod, that's me, sorry, I never introduced myself, I'm Cameron, or Cam, or KU, okay? And also Lawrence Louie, uh, our third co-founder who was not able to join us this evening, okay? I wanted to set down some rules for fairness, just to make sure that everyone gets a good experience tonight. I know that some of you have very strong opinions one way or another. I have very strong opinions one way about how rapid transit should happen in the whole region and throughout Ontario. So we want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to share their concerns, to ask their questions, to share their opinions. Okay, So everybody gets to speak in turn. I would ask you to please not interrupt. Give everyone a chance to say their piece. Okay? Also, no heckling or shouting. Sometimes if someone is speaking and you disagree with them, it's very tempting to speak out while they're talking. And that can be very frustrating for the speaker and for you and for everyone else who's just trying to listen. Okay? No matter what someone's opinion is, we can learn from each other because we can learn what everyone else is most concerned about. Okay? The TDC is not here to debate different options. Okay? They're actually not allowed to do that. They have to follow the rules as to how they were instructed to do things by city council. Okay? That's the way the law works. They are here to share the facts about the plans. Okay? So for any questions that are directed at the representative from the TTC, I'd ask that you please stick to questions about what it, what it is that's going to happen, what are the facts about this system, that sort of thing. Okay? If there are any questions that they feel they're not able to respond to, we might be able to respond. Okay? Just because we, we have opinions and we're allowed to say them, okay? But we have opinions that we'll share, and the most important thing, you get to make up your own mind, okay? I'm really happy that you're here. We want to share information, okay? So that way you can decide what it is that you would like to actually see happen in your city, 
okay? And then at the end, we're saving a full hour, okay, hopefully a full hour, we'll see up here, for questions. So please wait till the end, okay, after the presentation's order to ask your questions. But you can fill out a question card if you want to make sure you don't forget. Or if anybody needs a pen or something to quickly write down a question so you don't forget, please just wave at one of us and we'll get you a pen, okay? So, that being said, welcome. Tonight's goals are to share facts about transit challenges, okay? to share facts about the new rapid transit that's going to be built, and to answer your questions and concerns. We will not cover up negatives, we will not ignore facts that we don't happen to like, and we will not ignore money issues, okay? I want to be honest with you and share everything completely factually with you so you can make up your mind having all the information. That's all it is, okay? So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd actually like to ask my co-founder, Joe Drew, to start us off and tell us, well, how did we get here? Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, I am, like all of our co-founders, an unpaid volunteer for some yeah. time. Yeah, uh, we, we spent our own money and our own time to come up with all of this information, all of these materials, uh, and we've received absolutely nothing from anyone to doing this has come out of our own pocket, we're doing it out of our own passion. Um, what I'd like to do today is just spend a couple of minutes and tell you a bit of a story about where we came from and how we got to where we are. Um, and this will be a factual story. Um, the reason is, um, we, have, we have basically four reasons why we are where we are. Um, and where we are is building light rail in, in Scarborough, Georgia. The first reason is that we have congestion. And when I say congestion, I don't just mean that there's a lot of traffic. I mean that the buses are full. And I mean that people are spending an extremely large amount of time getting from their home to their work or to their leisure. Um, the Toronto Board of Trade estimates that $6 billion is lost every year because of congestion is too It takes too long for people to get where they want to go. Uh, food spoils. People can't get the shipments that they need. Um, the average daily Toronto commute is 80 minutes. That means uh, both ways to and from the for example. Um, that is the worst in North America. Um, and our population is also growing. Um, it's estimated that we will double in the next 30 years in population, which means that if we don't somehow expand the amount of transportation that we have, we will be on a great kind of path. Um, and Fundamentally, there isn't room for more roads. You can't cave the entire of Toronto because people have to work places and they have to live places. And so if you can't make more roads, then you have to find a way to get people out of their cars and into transit. Uh, here are some of uh, our bus routes here. Uh, to compare the Shepherd subway to Edmonton buses that almost 80,000 people riding in every single day. Um, Finch buses at 40,000 and Shepherd buses at 27,000. Oh, uh, trying to. What, what, what people are actually experiencing is waiting for a bus that comes and is completely packed with passengers. The second problem is that building any new transit takes money and we don't have very much of it. Um, Mayor Ford, with his uh, subway plan that he had come up with uh, as part of his election campaign, um, that would have cost $3.7 million uh, to build the extension of the Shepherd subway from Don Mills down to Shepherd Town Center, or the Scarborough Town Center, sorry. Um, $3.7 million that we don't have. Um, to build all of what used to be called um, Transit City is now called the Metro. It's a 5 out of 10 plan. Um, we have $8.4 billion from the province. And a certain amount of it is allocated to different places. Um, and we don't have any extra money that is waiting to be used on anything else. Um, so, for example, uh, $3.7 billion for the subway. The old uh, the vehicle registration tax that was gotten in 2010 um, raised about $40 million, $40 to $60 million a year. The land transfer tax for people who are selling their homes uh, raised about $300 million a year. Um, so you can build about $350 million, sorry, you 
can build one kilometer of subway for every about three hundred and fifty million dollars, uh, which means that in order to get anywhere at all, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars over every single year. Second, we have an approval problem. What happens is that everyone loves approving new plans, uh, but they want it to be their plan. And so, for example, um, in 1992, Discover RT was to be extended to Malibu. Um, but the city council decided, no, we can't deal with the idea of having a tax increase. Um, there was going to be a subway along Eggleton, which was upgraded from uh, a busway, which would have been just rapid buses going on the surface, but in their own day, in line. Um, in 1994, this was in the process of being built. The original goal to watch the boring machines was being done. 1995, the new premier decides, no, we can't afford this, cancels the subway, and the city is actually on the hook for filling in the hole and uh, getting rid of all, canceling all the contracts. Um, at that time, uh, we were also trying to build uh, a subway from Young and Shepherd down to Scarborough Town Center. Um, unfortunately, because of the cancellation of the Edmonton subway and the other cancellations that came with it, um, the full Shepherd subway was never built. Um, and so in the 2002, we finally got what we do have uh, a town on Shepherd. Um, so now we're getting into something a little bit more uh, recent. 2007, um, then um, Mayor David Miller proposed this brand new plan called the Parents at the time. It would be seven lines, it would be light rail, it would be busway, um, and council approved this over and over again. Um, some of the money was clawed back by the, the province, but um, in 2010 um, they did confirm that we were, we have, here is some here is 8.4 billion dollars four lines to be built with light rail. Um, and then, of course, Mayor Ford was elected, and his decision was that, you no, know, again, the previously approved and any progress uh, plans were going to be canceled. Um, and so what happens is, over and over again, we have plans that are either in the process of being built, as the Edmonton subway was, as um, the, the Shepherd LRT was in the progress of being built, uh, and they are cancelled, and we are left on the hook for money. Uh, and so the idea is let's get past all of these approval problems. Let's just build them. Finally, and most importantly to people who live in Scarborough and Tokyo and North York, we have a fairness problem. Uh, about 25, about a quarter of the population of Toronto lives in Scarborough, or what we call Scarborough and Tokyo Legacy. Um, but rapid transit only serves uh, only about 16% of it uh, is in Scarborough, which means that Scarborough lights, I don't think I'm allowed to say Scarborough lights, are stuck on buses that are full, uncomfortable, and we're not sure when the next one is coming. We have to fix this. And how do we fix it? Um, well, first of all, we need more rapid transit. Everyone agrees that. What form should this rapid transit take? Well, um, what has been seen in all major cities is that rail, regardless of the type of rail, it could be go trains, it could be subways, it could be light rail, um, it attracts more riders because it's more comfortable. And there's something sort of reassuring about seeing a track going down the, the, the city road and said, knowing my next my, my rail car is coming. I know this for sure. Um, it's more environmentally friendly because it's electric. And in Ontario, we have uh, quite, quite a bit of hydroelectric power uh, that is totally interesting. Um, when it comes to what type of rail we want, the light rail uh, is extremely cost efficient. We're talking about a quarter to maybe a half the cost of subway. Uh, so for every kilometer of subway, it's 250. Light rail is at most about a um, hundred million dollars, uh, depending on whether it's a tunnel or or it's on, on the uh, on the surface. Um, second, we need to build with confirmed funding, meaning we are not in a position right now where we can raise taxes. Um, we need to 
have a really good, long discussion about what makes sense and what's most fair. Um, we have $8.4 billion from the government of Ontario that has been confirmed. We also have $300 million from the government of Canada uh, to build the <laughs> right there. The, the government of Canada has kicked in their uh, amount of money for the shed. And what needs to happen, or what needs to happen, I guess, is that we advocate to, to our councillors, to our representatives who have been duly elected by us, to represent them and say that this is important to us. They approve, and it goes through the normal channels. Um, as recently as last week, um, MetroLinks, which is the provincial body, uh, approved the plan that Toronto City Council had uh, a pass for light rail on Shepherd, Finch, uh, Eglinton, and Scarborough Rapid Transit replacement. And finally, we have to fix the fairness problem. Scarborough is finally going to be getting the light of the rapid transit that they desperately need. Remember, one quarter of the population. We're finally going to be getting one quarter of the rapid transit. We have some maps coming up that will show you exactly where all of the rapid transit is going to be built. A great majority is in Scarborough. So this is a, a brief timeline. Um, I don't want to go over it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I mentioned it. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you have questions, please write them down in the flash. I'd like to ask David from the 